This just in, the FBI's Joint Terrorism Task Force is now investigating a deadly and fiery crash outside a New Year's Eve concert involving an SUV that was loaded with gas cans. Now, this happened in Rochester, New York, as thousands of people were pouring out of the concert venue. You can see that SUV is engulfed in flames, and police say the driver slammed into another car, and the vehicles then plowed through a crowd of people crossing the street. We want to show you the video of the aftermath. You can see red gas cans on the ground next to the charred SUV. The police chief says at least a dozen were found inside and around the vehicle. The crash killed at least two people, and we're told the driver of the SUV is fighting for his life in the hospital. Eyewitnesses say you could smell the gasoline. It was only about 20 feet from the building, and uh, at the time when everybody was funneling out, the flames were probably still like 15 feet high. As we walked down into the hallway, um, and going down the stairs, the smell of gasoline was just so intense. I, I couldn't believe how strong it was. Let's bring in CNN's Bryn Gingras. Bryn, I think you made such a good point when we were talking about this earlier. They're already in a state of heightened alert. Right. New Year's, obviously, with everything that's happening yeah. in the Middle East right now. What more are we learning about the investigation? Yeah, well, the fact that the JTTF is part of this investigation, possibly even leading this investigation, that's a big factor here, right? Because that raises the alarm of having all of these sort of agencies working together to figure out was terrorism involved. And it could be just domestic terrorism, someone wanting to commit an act of violence against a large crowd of people, which, of course, you when you hear about this story, you see those red flags of what immediately the FBI, the JTTF investigators see. It's gas canisters found inside a vehicle and a vehicle ramming through a crowd of people. Let's back up a bit and give you a little bit of the facts of what happened here. So this is not even an hour into the new year in Rochester, New York, at the Kodak Center, which was having some sort of concert. About a thousand people attended that concert. And as they were leaving the concert, there were actually police helping a group of people across a crosswalk. And a Ford Expedition rammed into a car that was exiting, crossing over that crosswalk. So two people inside the car it hit, which was a Mitsubishi Outlander, were killed. There were people that were injured in the crosswalk. There was also the driver of that Ford Expedition uh, that was also seriously injured and is in the hospital right now. I want you to hear more from the police about how they described what happened. The force of the collision caused the two vehicles to go through a group of pedestrians that were in the crosswalk and then into two other vehicles. There was a large fire associated with the crash that took the Rochester Fire Department almost one hour to extinguish. Yeah, and you heard those concert goers saying they could smell that gasoline as they were exiting uh, that venue. But a dozen gas canisters found in and around that Ford Expedition. So that's what's raising, of course, this to a whole new level of an investigation. you got to believe that investigators already are trying to figure out who that person is, combing through their social media, talking to anyone who went to the concert, talking to maybe the family members of that person. We're still trying to figure out exactly what happened here. And, of course, we'll keep you updated. Richard Grass, thank you. All right. And joining us now, CNN law enforcement contributor and retired FBI special agent Steve Moore. We appreciate your time this morning. I think Bryn's details that she lays out, I think, are critical here because there are still so many unanswered questions. If you're an investigator on this scene right now or around this scene, what questions are you asking? Well, I, I have to explain to myself, uh, you know, why uh, this would happen at that time. Why? Is there a legitimate reason for this? Because you don't want to uh, call something terrorism before be and, and spend all your resources. Um, you know, the timing, uh, almost 1 a.m. Well, you could say he was uh, he was out there for New Year's Eve. The fact that he, he is uh, alleged to have gone and rented this vehicle at the airport earlier, um, you know, that's, that's a pretty hard one to... Uh, to explain away, except maybe he's an Uber driver uh, and looking for a different vehicle. That's part of the uh, business plan for some. So what you're doing is taking this apart, each separate fact, and trying to find out what is the legitimate reason for this. And if you can't explain these things as you go down, it's kind of hard to explain a dozen gas cans. Um, then you have to come to a conclusion about whether it's terrorism or not. And part of that, obviously, is the identification of the driver and uh, just diving headfirst into their social media. So from what we know, you have this detail about the gas cans, but is there further study of the person's social media accounts? Is there sort of where do you start to look in better understanding, at least, um, some of the people who are involved? 
Yeah, I think social media is the first place I'd go for. When when somebody does something like this, if I mean, assuming for a second it was a terrorist incident, just for argument's sake, uh, when somebody does something like this, they are not going to uh, essentially kill themselves or ruin their lives without leaving some kind of note, a manifesto, some kind of explanation for what they do. Terrorists like to get uh, credit for what they've done, even if this is just kind of some lone wolf, which it would seem to be by the by the crude nature of of the attack. So there's going to be some kind of indication that they wanted to take credit for this, um, and that's going to be found uh, a lot of times in social media, a search of the residents, uh, talking to friends and neighbors. That's going to be. Uh, number one, you might also uh, speak to this person. I don't know if he's conscious or not, uh, but yeah, you can interview at the hospital. Um, this is, you know, a, a pretty intense investigation at this phase. Yeah, uh, with necessity. It's still major unanswered questions as we go forward. We'll keep you guys updated. Steve Moore, thank you.